out there. Welcome back to the Phantoms Fag YouTube channel. I am back with another review, and this week, I'm sorry about the No Meandering Conversations podcast. I wasn't able to film one, but I will have one out next week, and I'm going to get back into work of working on those. I'm also working on a small little short film project that will come out soon, so be on the lookout for that one. Anyways, this week's review is of Friday the 13th, released in 1980, starring Betsy Palmer, Kevin Bacon, Adrian, Adri, Adrian King, Robbie Morgan, and it was directed by Sean S. Cunningham. Obviously, the first Friday the 13th follows Crystal Lake, which is a campground, and that has a bunch of history of tragedy, deaths, and mysterious killings around the since it's being reopened on Friday the 13th in 1979, as unsuspected camp counselors go in and then suddenly are killed off by a mysterious killer. Obviously, Friday the 13th is such a popular franchise out there. I have an eight-movie collection disc of the Friday the 13th movies, at least produced by Paramount, even though now it's owned by New Line Cinema or whatever bullshit is with that. And, uh, obviously, Jason big boy right there, is a huge pop culture phenomenon. Even though in this first movie, and even Scream commenters on this, he's not the killer. He's the motivation for the killer. Spoilers. But... <laughs> Does the movie work out as a whole? No, it is a very standard slasher in my opinion. The parts of this movie I liked, I will say right away. There are some moments of entertaining by the actor, entertainment by the actors, when there's weird scenes with random characters who show up, like the scene with the cop, or the scene with the hitchhike, the, the, the scenes with Crazy Ralph and stuff like that. Those scenes I find entertaining, but the stalkery slasher moments, I don't find all that engaging, and especially with Sean S. Cunningham's directing and the editing in this really does drag it down a lot. This movie fucking pads itself in holding on shots for way too fucking long and scenes that are just meandering. The climax of this has some entertaining parts, but it takes so fucking long to get to the end result that I'm like, God, just stop this already. I'm fucking sick of this. But... Let's say more of the positives. Harry Manfredini's score in this is very well done. I love his score. It really does carry the slashery scenes of this. The ki 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 ah ah ki 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 ah ah ah. It surprisingly works out very well. The score in this one is a pretty iconic horror score and works out. Obviously, I do not enjoy this movie more than A Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that movie is a lot better for a classic slasher. This movie is very fucking standard in its results. There isn't really anything new being explored here with this subgenre. Especially because the directing and the editing is so piss poor. Because Sean S. Cunningham just keeps still shots of characters doing things, not cutting. Like, three minutes we're watching a character make coffee. She goes back in, puts the coffee on the stove, turns it on, then goes back in to get something else. It just takes way too fucking long, and then each time there's a vehicle moving, you need to see them completely exit frame instead of doing that. This movie fucking pads itself for only being an hour and 35 minutes. You would think that this would be shorter, but the directing is really stiff and stale, and most of the acting isn't really stand out, except Betsy Palmer as... Pamela Voorhees, spoilers, she's the killer, even though I have story problems with the fact that the killer is this random lady of a kid who we never met, and another character was set up to be a cliffhanger, red herring, and never amounts to fucking anything. Crazy Ralph is in this one, he's somewhat entertaining, so I'll give that. But most of the actors in this, even Kevin Bacon, aren't even that interesting. Adrian King is alright, but most of the other camp counselors are just fodder that then get killed. And Tom Savini's practical makeup effects do relatively hold up in this one. I love most of his effects. The axe killing somebody, the throat slits, the arrow through the neck. Most of the effects in this really do hold up. But the parts of this that really don't work don't work for me, which are... 
the acting being really stiff and stale, not all that engaging, the directing and editing being so goddamn drawn out that I'm just like, okay, can we get fucking through this? Sean S. Cunningham really sucked at directing this movie. He did put the franchise together, which I'm glad of, but this movie is so stale in comparison to my memory. It is so drawn out and boring. There are shots that linger way too fucking long and plot threads that go way too far out. And then you have Tom Savini borrowing a snake from a guy who he actually killed the fucking snake, which that's one of the most well-known trivia of this movie. But yes, as I said, the makeup effects do hold up, and there's some pretty good kills, but it takes way too long to get to the kills and all of that. Betsy Palmer, when she shows up, is actually pretty fucking good. She plays crazy in a very good way. And she goes back and forth, and she does some scary moments, like that creepy Jason voice. She does, like, kill her, mommy, kill her. She's very good at that, I will say. If she was in the movie more, I would enjoy it. But then the climax is literally her chasing her around, getting Cooter uppercutted, and then getting her head lopped off, and then man hands appear up because that's not Betsy Palmer, but... But no, I enjoyed that aspects of the film. But the red herring with Steve Christie, him never being in the film, and him and Pamela having the same car so you don't believe who's who, and all the fucking drag out of characters doing meaningless actions leading to meaningless shit with some decent kills and some good music. But for the most part, there's only like meek moments of entertainingness sometimes, like the scene with the cop and some other scenes. I found entertainment through those, and especially with Betsy Palmer's acting, the kills, I don't know, it's slightly entertaining to me because of those classic slasher moments. I don't mind a slasher film, but you have to engage me with the directing and editing, or its themes, or something like that, to make itself more stand out, like the original Halloween did. With this one, it doesn't do that for me, and... The standout moments, yes, I said, are the kills in the music and Betsy Palmer's acting. Those are really the only standout moments. The reason why slasher movies work is because the directing and editing really do help it carry out to it. And the character work is also very important. These actors are not bad, but these characters are so fucking meh that I don't give a shit. So, yeah, if... It, if I recommend this, it's like, it's a classic for a reason, but do I think it's necessarily worth watching if you're gonna marathon them, or if, you, you know, you're chilling at a party and you want to put on a Halloween movie, or a horror movie with your friends and stuff like that, you could watch something way worse than this. There are some entertaining moments, but for the most part... I would say avoid this one in the Friday the 13th series. It's all not that engaging. Some of the other movies can be way more entertaining to me than this one, and especially other slashers like A Nightmare on Elm Street actually are engaging and more entertaining than this one. So, yeah, take it the way you want to take it, because this first one, I can see why it spawned such an iconic franchise, but there are other... There are other movies in that franchise that are way more engaging and way more entertaining. This one in itself is just kind of bland in the whole Friday the 13th franchise. So, and comparatively to these other slasher movies that came out, the other ones are more engaging to me than this one. So, it's a hard recommend. If, if you just want an entertaining slasher, you could pick a worse option. So... Yeah, that's going to be it for this review, so hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, subscribe down below if you did enjoy, and uh, make sure to comment on what you thought about the review. If you have any other movies you want me to review, make sure to leave those in the comments section. I always like to see those. Make sure to share and favorite the channel. I always like to see the growth. And yeah, I will see you all next time.